Hello and welcome to my channel, I am Bearded Dev. This is going to be another SQL tutorial and in this video we're going to be looking at primary key constraints. I've got here a create table statement that I'm going to be running. I'm going to be creating a new table called customers. Uh, just at the top of the statement there we're just checking if this table already exists and if it does we're going to drop that table and create it again. So we've got various columns and various data types in here. Some columns allow nulls and others don't. So we're going to be looking at the customer ID column, uh, which is an integer column and it's an identity. So if you're not aware of the identity, what that does is it generates uh, an incrementing integer value for me. So that saves me every time I insert into this table, having to insert a value into that column. SQL Server automatically does that for me. So first of all, we're going to go through exactly what a primary key constraint is or primary keys as they're better known. Primary keys, they uniquely identify each row in a table. They can be set on one column or multiple columns. If they are set on multiple columns, that is known as a composite key. The columns must not allow nulls and it will create a unique clustered index on the columns used. The permissions required, so if we're going to be looking at creating a table, we need permissions within the database to create tables. And if we're going to be altering the table to add a primary key to an existing table, which is one of the examples we'll go through, we'll need alter permissions on that table as well. And we can also only have one primary key per table. So we'll go over to SQL now and we'll go through some examples. We're now back over to the query window, so as I said, I'm looking to create this new table. The column in question that I want to create a primary key on is the customer ID column. So we're going to go through the first way of creating a primary key. So initially, I'm just going to go ahead and execute this query now. So that's executed successfully. I'm going to be working with the bookshop database, so I'll just refresh that and open up tables and I can see customers in here. If I open up columns, I can see the columns I've created. And now our primary key constraints will usually sit under our keys and as I can see there, I've got nothing available. So the first way to create a primary key is I'm going to right click on customers and open up the design of the table. So this will list our columns, data types and whether it's nullable or not. And then we can select each individual column and see unique properties at the bottom of the page. So the first way we're going to do it is simply by highlighting the customer ID column. We then right click and we have the option here to set primary key. So we go ahead and do that and I'll just save this table to ensure that's done correctly and if I just refresh in Object Explorer open up my columns I can now see I've got my key symbol next to my customer ID column and if I open up keys I've got my PK customers primary key created in creating the primary key that way it's probably similar to anybody who's used access in the past but we're now going to go through some examples of how to use the T-SQL syntax to create our primary key. So I'll just minimize Object Explorer and close that window now. So the first option we've got is within our create table statement itself. After the not null, we're just going to add primary key. And that will indicate to SQL that we want this column to be our primary key. So if I go ahead and execute that statement now, that's executed successfully. Again, I'll just refresh our tables. And we've now got our primary key here. But we can see that's been created. So this is automatically generated by SQL for us. So it puts the a PK customer, which does mean something to us, but then sort of a hash number which isn't really relevant to us. We'd have liked to have chosen what we would have called our primary key. So in, if we're searching uh, a database for through hundreds of primary keys and we want to identify which primary key we need to look at, we want a name that means something to us. 
So we're now going to look at a, another option, which is how we can actually name this primary key within our create table statement. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go into the next line just for clarity. I'll just close the results grid. So I'm going to write the keyword constraint because a primary key is a constraint. And then after constraint, we can give this a name. And now what I always do with constraints is first two letters indicate the type of constraint it is. In this case, it's a primary key, so PK. If it was a check constraint, CK, foreign key, FK. You get the picture with that. And then I always put underscore the table name and then another underscore and the column name. And then we need to indicate what type of constraint we're looking at. So in this case, it's going to be primary key. And then we open brackets and indicate to SQL which column we're going to be actually using, which is the customer ID. So we can see the syntax of that clearly now. So we've got, we give a const the keyword constraint, then the name of our constraint, what type of constraint it is, in this case it's a primary key, and then in brackets the column we're going to be looking at. If we were looking at multiple columns to create a composite primary key, we can just simply put a comma separated list within those brackets. So I'll go ahead and execute that now. And once I refresh within Object Explorer, that should give me a name that actually means something to me. And there we have it, PK customers underscore customer ID. The very final option we're going to have a look at is how we add a primary key to an existing table. So I'm just going to remove that constraint and go ahead and execute that query. I'll just refresh the table in Object Explorer so we can see that key has now been removed. And now we're going to look at an alter table statement. So simply what we're going to do, we're going to be altering our table customers and we're going to be adding a constraint. So again, well, pretty much exactly the same syntax as what we did previously. So again, I like to start it with PK because it indicates it's a primary key. Uh, keyword, or words in this case, primary key. And we're going to be looking at customer ID. I'll highlight that query and go ahead and execute now. I'll just close the results grid. Again, one last time, just refresh. And we can see we've now added that to our table. Now, last of all, rather than using Object Explorer, I just wanted to go through a couple of examples of how we can find primary keys. So if we can have a look at select all from a system table, sys.keyconstraints, and this will identify all constraints within our current database. So I've got a couple of primary keys on a couple of tables I created earlier, and we can see here this one, PK customers, customer ID, the date it was created, the parent object ID, which will be the table that it belongs to, the type, uh, a description of the type, the create date, and if it's been modified as well. So I hope you have enjoyed that video guys, just going through primary key constraints. If you are new to the channel, do check out my other videos. I have lots of excellent content on business intelligence and data development. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification button. Thanks a lot for watching.